Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. What has awakened us to another bright new Thursday morning? Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Morning prayer begins on page 33 of our Books of Common Prayer and continues on page 35 and following. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His love and mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this moment when we have this opportunity to make ourselves right with God. Let us bring to mind this morning before God those things of which our consciences are afraid. Things we did we ought not to have done and the things we didn't do that God desired us to do. Even the thoughts that were unworthy of our God. Let us therefore at this time confess our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us, in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to the Psalms that are appointed. This morning the Psalms that we have before us are Psalms 70 and 71. Psalm 70 begins at the bottom of page 555. We recite the Psalms together and continue after 70, continue straight on with 71. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, 
I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock and a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. For my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many. But you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me. And those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him because there is none who will save. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. And now that I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me, till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches to the heavens. You've done great things. Who is like you, O oh God? You've showed me great troubles and adversities. But you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the lyre for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing to you with a harp. O Holy One of Israel, my lips will sing with joy when I pray to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we will come to our first reading. And our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 55, and we are reading verses 1 to 13. Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 13. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall, shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord where he may be found. 
call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we will recite together the canticle, the Benedictus on page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You've come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our second reading. And our second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, we're reading from Mark chapter 8, from verse 27, to chapter 9, verse 1. Mark 8, 27 to 9, 1. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi and on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others Elijah and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel 
will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. So we take a moment here to reflect briefly on this reading to pray for God's divine inspiration and guidance. Here, I'd like just to focus on this question that Jesus asked his disciples and the answer that Peter gave. Who do people say that I am? And the disciples went on to tell him what the people were hearing. And they were thinking of John the Baptist and maybe Elijah, one of the prophets. So they were thinking of Jesus as, let's say, a prophet. But Jesus then, and that's the question for us as well today, who do you say? And that you, that you they tell us in the Greek is the emphatic you. Who do you say that I am? A question for each of us to reflect on and to answer very, very seriously. Peter, of course, had been with Jesus and had been, you know, pleased to, to, um, to be present at all those works of, those marvelous works of power that Jesus was able to do. You know, healing the sick, casting out demons, you know, uh, commanding the elements, the waves, the winds, you know, showing his power over all things. And so Peter had some insight. And you know, presumably he was talking for all his disciples, all his brothers, uh, disciples, when he said to Jesus that you are the Messiah. Now, the Jewish scriptures had, had you know, spoken of the one that God will send to and a, a, a descendant of David, you know, who will come to rule, who will come as king, you know, to um, defend the Jews against all their enemies, to cleanse the temple and, and restore that kind of relationship between God and his people. And of course, in Isaiah, we read a lot about this person. Um, not only a king, a Davidic king, you know, descended from David, that is, who would have that power over the enemies, but also one who would, as I just said, cleanse the temple and reestablish that proper relationship with God. He would be all of that. Of course, in Jesus' time, most people were thinking of that person as, you know, more in terms of a powerful, earthly kind of king, you know, more concerned with their liberation from the, you know, the oppression of foreign powers and in Jesus' time, the Romans in particular. But of course, Isaiah had spoken about this, this one that was to come in terms which suggested that he would be more of a suffering servant, you know. But it was that idea, you know, in their minds at Jesus' time, more of that conquering type of, of, of of Messiah. Messiah, of course, means anointed. God's very anointed. And in some senses, Jesus didn't fit 
for the masses and for many in the religious establishment and so on, didn't fit that idea of a suffering servant. Not that kind of Messiah, not one who will be more concerned about their relationship with God and restoring that, restoring that the people into that right relationship with their God, establishing God's kingdom, which is what Jesus proclaimed as he came to, to, to begin his ministry on earth. So when Peter said, you are the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, they all mean the same thing, anointed by God. Yes, he had in mind that Messiah of the scripture. But we, we, Peter didn't really um, elaborate, but later on, when Jesus begins to talk about, you know, what he would, he would have to die and all that, well, Peter clearly, his idea of the Messiah was the one more the conquering hero who would liberate God's people from the domination of foreign powers. This idea of a suffering Messiah, Peter didn't quite have it. But nevertheless, he did have some insight that Jesus indeed was the anointed one. At least that far. So Jesus saw the need really to explain to Peter. We, we said he called, when Peter tried to rebuke him, what kind, what are you talking about? That's not the, my concept of Messiah. In effect, this is what Peter was saying. Jesus, you know, had to rebuke him and say, you, 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 this is Satan talking. You know, God inspired you, yes to say that I am the Messiah, his anointed one, but now you're going off in the wrong direction. You're forgetting the scriptures and what they said about a suffering Messiah and how you'd redeem his people from sin and restore them into God's, into that right relationship with God. So you are talking, you have to get behind me because you're talking, you're not thinking of divine things. You're thinking of human things. And Jesus found in the story as well to call the crowd together and, and I still have that question in mind. Who do you say that I am? And that question is for us today as well, as I said. And here is what Jesus is speaking to the crowd and teaching them about what it really means to be a follower of this Messiah. This Messiah, what it really means. For us, of course, if we pause for a while to think of ourselves, one of the, the, the issues with us, of course, yes, we think of Jesus as Savior, we think of Jesus as mighty, but we think of Jesus so much as a provider of the things that we need. I want one present in, to help us in our times of trouble. Yes, and he is that. One to help us in, when we have our material and other needs. Yes, he is that. One to bring healing. Yes, he is all of that. But that's not all that he is. Jesus is our, our Lord and our king, he's the one who is, we've come to understand, which Peter and they didn't quite have at their time, we've come to understand that he's son of God in the real sense that he's one party of the Trinity. He's God, God the Son. You know, so we come to know Jesus as, as Lord. And we say it sometimes, but that, doesn't merely mean that Jesus is a provider. It means that if we have a relationship with him, then he, he and he says it here, if you want to be my followers, you, you have to follow me in all respects. And I have come to take up the cross. And you too, in many ways in your life, will have to take up that cross. Because as my followers, you will have a work to do. You have to imitate me. And as I have come to serve, you too will have to serve. As I have come to change the world, change the hearts of men and women, you will have that work to do as well. So there's work to do. There's not only benefit to ask for this and to have it. And I'm not only there to satisfy your, your physical and yes, your spiritual needs as well, but you are to follow me, to imitate me. And one of the things it will mean is suffering. You'll have to take up the same course that I am taking up. That you will have to, everybody will have to give their lives, but there'll be sacrifice in that sense. Take up the course. That will be part of what you have to do. It's not all going to be, you know, rosy as you follow me. 
there is going to be. You have to be prepared to give up, especially give up those, the things of the world, where they clash with what is required to be my disciples. You have to stand for truth, for truth. You know, in the face of whatever will face you. You have to stand for justice. You know, oppose injustice wherever you see it. You'll have to be people of integrity. In the midst of this corrupt generation, as Paul would say, you will have to stand out as people of integrity and honesty because you have to be my people. You have to be lights in the world. You have to be the salt of the earth as Jesus taught and, and, and as we read in the Sermon of the Mount. So there is, there is a part of your relationship with me. There is a part of your understanding of who I am that involves reflecting me and all that I have taught, reflecting my teaching in the world, and being lights in the world and helping to continue my work, which I will complete to. When I go back to heaven, you will have to be the ones to continue my work. Indeed, we know that Jesus gave us that, that mission, that commission to make disciples. This is the work we have to do. So our concept of Jesus as Lord is great, as King is great, as Messiah is great, but it's not all about what we can get, the benefits we can get. It's about the work that we are also called to do as his followers. And Jesus made it very clear. Yes, Peter, yes, Peter. Yes, you have to, if you want to become my followers, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And in this world, do not let the things of the world be loom too large in your sight because there's, there's more, there are more important things than the transient things of this world. So yes, who do, you, who do we say? The question for us, who do we say Jesus is? Yes, Jesus is there, he's all powerful, he, he'll be there for us in our times of need and our troubles. But we also, as his followers, are to complete the work that he has begun to help to bring all people into his saving ambit. The Lord be with you. So we continue then with the Apostles' Creed on page 42. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the collect for today, which 
is the collect for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany on page 161 in our Books of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray for people all over the world and all the countries of the world, especially those places where people are suffering because of oppressive governments. And today we think of the people of Myanmar, where the army is taking over. We think of other countries as well, where people, uh, where there's oppression and repression. We think of places where people are suffering from natural disasters. In all those places where people, where life for people is difficult and trying and where there is great need, we pray that God, they will experience God's presence through the generosity of others, through the kindness of others. Today we pray for God's church worldwide. Especially we pray for the Anglican Communion worldwide, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Most Reverend Justin Welby. Pray for our own, the Anglican Church in the province of the West Indies, for our own Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, also Bishop of Barbados. We pray for the Church in our own, the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, for our own Bishop Claude. May God continue to bless and inspire him as he leads the Church in this place. Pray for his family who look after his basic needs, and for all those who support him in his ministry in this diocese. We pray for all our parishes and all our clergy. May God continue to inspire us to do his work and help us you know, to be truly true pastors to our people. And we pray for our people, Christians generally in this country. We pray for all of us. May we truly reflect Christ you know, around us. May people see Christ in us. May we be you know, centers of Christ's love moving outwards from us so that indeed we may be helping to bring others into that saving grace of Christ. We pray for all those who God has put in authority over us, the decision makers in our line, the Prime Minister, President, members of Parliament, ministers, all those who are in decision making uh, positions. We pray that it will be guided by God's Holy Spirit and make those decisions that will help our people and be in the best interest of all. We pray for all those who are in need of any kind today, those who do not know where the next meal is coming from, those who are abused, for families who have lost their loved ones. We particularly remember this family whose daughter has been abducted and today they do not know what, is, what has happened to her. We pray for them that they experience God's presence at this time. You know, for all those who are victims of, of crime, you know, other kinds, whether it's white collar crime or violent crime, for those who have been abused, people in all kinds of need today, we pray for them, for families where there is strife, for homes where children do not get the guidance that they need and are going astray, for persons in every kind of need today, the sick and suffering, Lord, and those who look after them, relatives, doctors and nurses, those who work in nursing homes, for all those who care for the sick, Lord, we lift them up this morning. We pray that they will have hands, that will be hands of compassion and love as they care for the, the sick. So today, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for who you are, Lord. And we pray that by your grace, we will truly represent you in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We turn to the prayer of dedication on page 47. Mighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.